waiting with the results. A butter of surrender! <laughs> Let's go! Ready to roll on Thursday. We got a couple rounds for you. First and foremost, midweek must-see matches from the past week. And there is a lot of them, folks. And then we are going to follow this up with Retrospective on a Thursday, looking back at this day in wrestling, July 6th. So let's get into it. Everything should be uh, rolling on a schedule this week. Tomorrow we'll be doing verses. We're going to be looking back at Impact versus Ring of Honor. I'm kind of debating maybe on doing another versus this week on the weekend, maybe on Sunday, a special versus where we might be looking head to head with the quality SmackDown that is on tap for Friday night from Madison Square Garden against a pretty strong sounding AEW collision on Saturday. So. Keep your eyes peeled right here on this YouTube channel because Sunday night I may decide to do a special edition of Versus where we do not Impact Versus Ring of Honor. That will be tomorrow. But Sunday we might take a look back at two big events from the coming weekend here. Smackdown on Friday from MSG against Collision on Saturday with that big Samoa Joe against CM Punk match. And so much more on that show. So stay tuned. We'll uh, be keeping you updated here at Wrestling Rants at what exactly we're thinking with that one. But I, I, I'm pretty confident I'm going to be doing a rant on that on Sunday. Saturday as well as laying the rant down. Looking at all the industry news. And everything from the past week in wrestling. And then we move on to next week where we do the same thing day after day. Monday we'll do a mega rant. Tuesday, top 10 takes. Wednesday, trying to get this must-see matches up on Wednesday night. It gets so hard once I get done with Dynamite. I'm usually pretty exhausted. Last night, I watched Dynamite. Then I had to catch up on NXT as well after that. So by the time that wrapped up, I was ready to call it a night. So here we are, midweek must-see matches. This is everything and then some. In a wild week of wrestling here. Wow. Uh, June 29th through July 5th. A lot, and I mean a lot of stuff coming down this week in wrestling. Not just from WWE, AEW, but from a lot of other promotions as well. I was pretty much knee deep in all the wrestling content this weekend. So I was able to catch a lot of stuff. Uh, let's talk about it. Let's not waste any more time here. First and foremost, last Thursday we had the usual Impact versus Ring of Honor. And take a look back at that, the last episode of Versus. Personally, I didn't think that there was anything on either show that was truly on a level of, wow, you really need to check this out and really give this a look. I guess if we're going to break things down a little bit, I'd say if you're going to choose one from both Ring of Honor and Impact for the night on Thursday, the 29th of June, I would say the opener with Trey Miguel against Chris Sabin on Impact was worth a look. Also, I would say uh, as far as Ring of Honor goes, there was an eight-man tag with the Lucha Brothers, El Bikino, Commander against the Work Horsemen, Shane Taylor, and I think it was Gringo Loco. That might be worth checking out, but that's about where I, the long and short of Thursday night goes as far as must-see matches. Then we get to Friday, and there actually was a trio of matches from three different promotions. We talked about it in the Impact Down Under Mega Rant, but check out the X Division Championship match from that event in Australia between Chris Sabin Frankie Kazarian and Robbie Eagles from New Japan. Really, really good triple threat three-way match for the Exhibition Championship. Also on SmackDown, I have to say Charlotte and Asuka was okay. Finished with a little wonky with the Bianca Belair situation. But I was still alright. 
I would say check it out. The crowd was great on SmackDown from London, no question about it. That alone, if you haven't seen the show, might be worth a look. Just to, just to hear that crowd, that was a hot crowd for SmackDown. And a little trivia for you, if you checked out the ranch or the uh, mega ranch on Money in the Bank, that was the highest grossing SmackDown in history from London. Also on Rampage, to open up the show, I gotta give nods to this one, Claudio Castagnoli against Commander for the Ring of Honor World Championship. A really fast-paced match that is worth a look. We get to Saturday, and there is a shit ton of matches to talk about on the 1st of July. First and foremost, of course, that great Money in the Bank pay-per-view. Three matches stand out on that card. Both Money in the Bank matches for the men and the women, and as well as that main tag, that Bloodline Civil War match. Again, I talked about it in the Mega Rat, a little long in the tooth at 32 minutes and a half seconds. I would have cut it down to about 20 minutes, but that second and a half of that match was great and well worth it. Also on July 1st, another event with the Impact Down Under Tour from Wagga Wagga, Australia. Saw a Impact Tag Championship match between the Motor City Machine Guns and the team of ABC, the Bullet Club's members, Ace Austin and Chris Bay. Definitely a must-see match. It felt like a blow-off of their feud and all around excellent. Over on AEW on Collision, we had Samoa Joe against Roderick Strong in a match take a few nights before in Canada. I'd say check that out. That was actually the main event of the show. And then also another show worth taking a look at was Wrestling Revolver's Cage of Horrors 2 from Iowa, from suburban Des Moines. The Cage of Horrors match was a six-man wild hardcore match between the second year crew of GCW against the Rascals. This was Trey Miguel, Zachary Wentz, and I believe Myron Reed. What a match that was also. Get this, on the same day, we had Samoa Joe and Roderick Strong on a taped episode of Collision. On the Wrestling of Revolver show, we had Roderick Strong against Speedball Mike Bailey. So this is maybe a first so far in, in doing these must-see match rants. On the same day, a particular wrestler had two must-see matches. How about that? On Sunday the 2nd, really nothing to talk about in the world of wrestling. Things kind of took a break. Then on the 3rd, we got Monday Night Raw, and a one particular standout match was Rhea Ripley against Natalia for the Women's Championship. This was so, so, so much better than I thought it'd be. A real standout match on Raw this week, no doubt. And also, I have to give it to NXT for a tape episode. I thought there was a few things that stood out on that one. Mustafa Ali against Tyler Bate particularly was pretty good. And I don't know what the consensus is on this concept at this point, but I thought the NXT Underground presentation between Damon Kemp and Eddie Thorpe was really good. I liked, I feel like this was the best iteration of the underground concept there was a belly to belly suplex Kemp put on Thorpe from the ring apron to the outside that was pretty impressive I just thought the way they laid out this match with Gable Stevenson as well was just all around great and then we talked about it as well Mustafa Ali and Tyler Bate on NXT solid solid match for sure and also on the 4th of July we're not done we had New Japan Strong's Independence Day from Corican Hall in Tokyo, Japan, with a couple banger matches for sure. Uh, the New Japan Junior Tag Championship, Francisco Akira and TJP lost those championships to De Dear Dan Maloney and Clark Connors of the Bullet Club, so they are the new New Japan Junior Heavyweight Tag Champs in a uh, quite an athletic match, no doubt about it. And then the main event of the Independence Day Night 1 at Corican was 
El Desperado teaming with, for the first time ever in a New Japan ring, Deathmatch legend from Japan, Jun Kasai, in there against John Moxley and Homicide. This was fucking wild. Um, I'm probably not going to have a time to do a mega rant on these Independence Day shows, but let me just tell you, this match was nuts. There was uh, elevated fork boards. There was a cross kind of board with sharp, um, basically razor blades in it. There was all kinds of crazy stuff in this match. Everybody was bleeding. Everybody was brutalized. This did not feel like a New Japan match at all, period. Worth checking out if you're into that kind of stuff. What a match this was. Wild, wild match. Then let's move on to yesterday on the 5th of July. We have more from the New Japan Strong Independence Day shows. Three matches that really stood out on the second night. Eddie Kingston over Kenta for the New Japan Strong Openweight Championship, meaning Eddie Kingston's the new champion. The match itself was okay. It was, I'd say, above average for sure, but the post-match even made it that much more special as Kingston was way emotional with winning the first New Japan Championship in his history, and he felt it, let me tell you. Also, another title change, Julia of Stardom defeated Willow Nightingale for the New Japan Strong Women's Championship. Yet another excellent match on this card. We're checking out. And then the main event was another death match. John Moxley against El Desperado in a singles match. You know, it was still really awesome. But I do think I liked their first match last year in Nashville better than this match. As well as I feel like the tag match on night one of Independence Day was maybe a little bit better than this match. But one particular highlight of this match was the double skewer spot where both guys put wooden skewers in each other's foreheads. Ouch. One more match to talk about to close out this jam-packed week in midweek musty matches from Dynamite. Kenny Omega and Wheeler Yuta. It was the main event of Dynamite. I thought Dynamite was rather lackluster other than this match, but as the main event was, it stood out. It was a strong match for sure. Looking back at everything from the week, what is the one match that I would say above and beyond anything you should probably check out? Oh my goodness, there is so much musty matches this week. I personally thought that Desperado and Jun Kasai tag with Moxley and Homicide was really a standout match for sure. I also think you should really check out both Money in the Bank matches, the latter matches if you haven't. But chances are, if you're watching this, you probably have. So that's my jam-packed list this week of midweek must-see matches. Come on back next week. We got more as this has just been a wild year in wrestling. And wow, the hits just keep on coming right here midweek. Must-see matches. And coming up, we got Ranch Respective on the horizon this day in wrestling, July 6th. Lots to talk about, some significant events on this day in wrestling worth mentioning as part of Ranch Respective right here, coming up next on Wrestling Rants.